and this is the only opportunity for scrutiny. I call Dr Liz Craig. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, every so often um, in the House we get to debate some bills which remind me why I got into politics. And I think this is one of those bills. But I'm not talking about the original bill. I'm talking about the SOP, because the original bill, um, under the masquerade of a policy neutral rewrite, sought to entrench the previous government's social investment approach into legislation. But what the SOP has done is it's removed those changes to the framing that would have impacted thousands of New Zealanders. But what I want to do is talk about part two, which is what we're talking about today, and focus on subpart 9A of the SOP, the winter energy payment. And this is actually something that is new um, to the bill because it only got passed into legislation um, in just before Christmas last year. And uh, the first payments are going to be starting on July 1st this year, so that's why it's new. It's putting the legislation all together in the one place. And um, what Clause 65A just talks about is what the purpose of the winter energy payment is. And it's to provide financial assistance to help people meet their household heating costs during winter. And then Clause 65B defines winter as a 22-week period starting on the 1st of May. Um, for me, living in the far south, that's actually a bit of an underwhelming definition, um, but that's what the bill says. And then 65C talks about eligibility. So those receiving the main benefit, NZ Super, or a, vet, a veteran's pen, uh, benefit, pension. And this is some of the most low-income families and households in New Zealand. They're going to benefit from this payment. And where I live in the far south, this is going to make a huge difference to people's lives um, because the winter energy costs are huge amounts of people's everyday income. When I first moved to Dunedin over a decade ago, we moved into just a big old rental. Um, and our first winter was absolutely freezing. So we shut ourselves in the bedrooms, had column oil heaters on, um, and we were scared to move from room to room because the ambient temperature was about two to three degrees outside the heated rooms. And so me and the kids spent most of the evenings tucked up in bed watching videos with a duvet on. And yet our first winter power bill that, um, that winter was $800. Um, and I mean, that's real money, even for us who had a high income at the time. Surprisingly, when I moved to Invercargill, actually it was worse, we moved into an old wooden villa, because I like old villas, um, and ambient temperatures were about two to three degrees um, on most mornings. And so I would go to bed with gloves on, double duvets, two hotties, and I'd have my iPad in bed, and there'd be fog on the iPad screen, and my fingers would go numb touching the screen. But the thing is, in both cases, I had the money to sort that out. We ended up getting insulation heat pumps, and now it's a tolerable, I don't know how many degrees, but it's survivable. But a number of people in my community have been talking to me about their winters. And I remember a pensioner um, who was talking about the fact that she has to go to bed when the sun goes down um, with a hot water bottle and duvet because she can't afford to pay her heating bills. Another mum got me to have a look at her home where it was a cold, uninsulated home. And the kids were getting repeatedly sick because, um, again, they couldn't afford the heating and it was freezing. And so, you know, I used to look after kids in the hospital system um, where, you know, they came in with lots and lots of respiratory infections. And my colleagues even now are dealing with huge winter peaks. And I think the thing is that um, this winter energy payment is going to make a huge difference to many people's lives because it'll take that edge off that fear of turning on the heater. But some people are saying, well, OK, does everybody need this winter energy payment? Um, and there are some provisions so that if you're on a pension and you feel like you don't need it, you can actually opt out. Um, there's some very wise clauses, though, that say if you're actually um, a couple receiving it, MSD needs to make sure that you check with your partner first um, before you actually forego the money in the, in the pocket. Um, the other people that may not be eligible are people living in residential um, rest homes um, and hospital settings where the government's already paying um, their subsidy for their care because they actually have adequate heating. I mean, visiting my own parents in rest home, um, I know that the temperatures are set really high and they don't need to actually afford it. But for everybody else, um, those on a low income who are going to be in the hot, with the hot water bottles in bed this winter, this is going to make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So here's to entrenching the winter energy payment yeah. in our social security legislation. Yeah. Yeah. And awesome. I commend this SOP 25 to the House. Fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. Nice. Uh, I call uh, the Honourable Tim McIndoe.
Madam Chair, what a fantastic...